everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review, and today we're going to take a look at the new DC Collectibles Arrow Figure 2 pack. Uh, this new set just hit comic and specialty shops this week and features two figures on the CW television show Arrow, um, which basically focuses on the DC Comics Green Arrow character. Uh, the set includes figures of Oliver Queen, who is Arrow. And then the other figure listed in the set is Deathstroke. Now, I'm going to assume that pretty much probably all of you have caught up through Season 1 at this point. If not, then you might want to mute your uh, uh, computer for a couple seconds because this might be considered spoiler to you. Okay, so as I said, they list this figure as Deathstroke on the set. Um, but if you've obviously watched season one, you know this is not actually Deathstroke. This is Deathstroke's partner, Wintergreen, um, who uh, ends up, you know, betraying Slade Wilson, and 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 is not the actual Deathstroke character. I my guess is they didn't list Winter uh, this character's Wintergreen because at the time when the set was announced, a we didn't know the the this was going to be Wintergreen, and B, people, most people probably don't have a clue who Wintergreen is. Wintergreen is a character in the comic books. He's much older um, than he was in the TV series, but a very minor character and one most people probably w wouldn't be familiar with. So just to point that out, that it's not actually Deathstroke, it's Wintergreen that we're getting in the set. Okay, so um, the figures come in the standard uh, type of DC collectible packaging. Uh, obviously, it's a bit bigger since it contains two figures, but it's your standard window box type packaging. Um, up at the top, we see that it says it's based on the hit CW television show. Um, the packaging is in white and green to match the characters, um, the Arrow character. Down below, we've got the Arrow logo from the television series and the DC Collectibles logo. And the figures are clearly displayed so you can see what you're getting. And then on the one side, we see uh, there's essentially another window so you can kind of see the figures from the side. And we also have the name of the two figures in the set. And on the other side of the box, we have a picture of the actor in his Arrow gear from the television series, along with the Arrow logo and the name of the figures down at the bottom. And then on the back, again, we have a picture of uh, the actor from the television series um, and then a little brief bio about the television series and Oliver Queen and everything. And then on the right side, we have pictures of the two figures and the CW logo. And then down at the very bottom right corner in very small print, it tells us that these figures were sculpted by Gentle Giant Studios. Okay, so let's get the figures open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the both figures outside of the packaging. Now we'll take a look at each figure individually, but I just wanted to first give you a look at them together, standing together. Um, you'll see that both figures look pretty true to their appearance in the TV show. Um, and they both come with a number of accessories, which again we'll go into detail here in just a moment. Now, uh, while we have them standing here together, we'll just look at uh, the scale. Um, Deathstroke is a little bit shorter than the Arrow figure. Um, Deathstroke stands at about 6.75 uh, inches tall. And then Arrow, with, from his feet to his hood, is right around 7 inches tall. Okay, so here's a look at the Arrow figure. Um, now this figure comes with a number of accessories, which we'll go over. Um, he's got pretty good detail and, and pretty nice articulation. Um, a lot better articulation than like the new 52 Green Arrow figure that we got uh, previously from DC Collectibles. Um, I think the actors like they got the actor's likeness pretty good with uh, the face sculpt on this. Now he's got this hood, which um, is basically a, a soft material, and you can actually pull it back off of the head. So uh, we've kind of seen that feature with other figures in the past. So the hood. Uh, it doesn't, you know, kind of like comes back up on his head, so you kind of have to kind of hold it down if you really want it off of his head, but you can pull it back so that you can see a full head sculpt with hair and everything. And again, I think they've done a pretty good job of capturing the actor's likeness from the TV show. Um, now this version of Arrow is obviously from earlier 
in like the first season where he was painting green on his eye around his eyes as opposed to wearing an actual mask. And I do think that maybe they went a little heavy on the beard and mustache. I know usually he's got like some five o'clock shadow and stuff, but with this figure it almost looks like he's got a full on beard and mustache. But still overall I think they've done a pretty good job with with the detail and everything. Um, now one drawback to this hood is, like we again have seen with the other figures with this kind of feature, is the hood itself does not turn. You can turn the head inside of the hood, but like if you're wanting him to look sideways, um, you have to pull the hood back, otherwise he's basically looking into his hood. So that can be a little bit limited as far as like posing him in, in good positions. Because the, again, the hood, you know, you can pull it back, but it doesn't stay back too well. You know, it kind of looks funny sitting um, on his head like that. So, but that's basically if you want him to look to the side is what you've got to do. Now he's got nice little details. He's got uh, his little arrow launcher, wrist arrow launcher on, on his uh, left or his right hand. Um, no, I'm sorry, his left hand. So that's pretty cool. Uh, they're not removable or anything. Um, he's got a, a quiver which is removable. Um, it's attached loosely and he's actually got arrows that are removable as well from the quiver and we'll go into more detail when we look at all the accessories. Um, but as far as the quiver itself goes, as I said, it is actually removable. Um, but if you want to get it off, the easiest way is basically he's got a midsection joint here where the upper body is attached to the uh, lower body with a ball joint, basically. So you can kind of just pull it apart like that and then just slide down the quiver around his arm and then it just comes off and then you can pop it pop it back on and it I will note that it can be a little you got to really push hard to get that ball joint to push back in but um, but if you wanted to really take the quiver off you could so besides the hood itself being the soft type material he's also got these uh, shoulder type padding that goes over uh, his upper body and those are actually separate pieces too. They're not removable or anything, but they are separate pieces. Um, and they have a little bit of flexibility there. And they're basically that same kind of soft, pliable type material. Um, he's also got a belt with another quiver of arrows on, on his side. And again, those aren't, the arrows there aren't removable. The belt is a loose piece, but the belt's not removable or anything, but it is a, a loose piece on the figure. So it doesn't really prohibit the movement of, of his legs or anything. And then he's just got some nice detailing with like some fluorescent green um, on his legs to kind of stand out. Um, he's got that same kind of fluorescent green striping on his sides and on his back. And he's got some nice detailing here on his upper back as well. And like I said, for the most part, it seems to be very true to what we see in the television series. So for accessories, they've actually given this figure uh, quite a few. Um, he comes with his bow. Um, and there's some nice detailing on the bow and the handle. You can see like the brown wrappings and then this like gold piece that kind of sticks out um, so pretty nice detailing it's got a it's got a bow string that that's pretty elastic and he ho holds the bow uh, primarily um, in his uh, left hand and it can be a little tricky uh, the easiest way to get the bow in his hand that I found was to just take his hand out and then the fingers can kind of be pressed in a little bit, so you might need to like kind of pull the fig fingers out a little bit. But then you can just kind of slide the handle in there, and it'll end up gripping it pretty nicely and tightly. And then once you have the, it gripped, then you just stick the hand back in. And again, like I said, he holds it pretty, pretty nice and tight. And as for his hands, he comes with two, a pair of open hands, one to hold, the one hand holds the bow, and then the other one um, is made to hold 
arrows basically and they've actually kind of given him some space between his fingers um, so you can stick the arrow in between his fingers so he holds the arrow nice and tightly which is nice that's a that's a nice feature and so again it's just take the hand out get the arrow in there and then you can stick the hand back in and then you can get him into like some bow holding and shooting positions um, and again we'll go into that a little bit more when we look at the articulation he comes with two single arrows um, and they basically have green tips like you see in the TV series and then they have uh, uh, the staff of the arrow is, is black, all black and then he's got yellow and green feathers on the end of it and he comes with two of those and then he comes with a, a clumping of arrows which are all kind of molded together but basically so you can stick in his quiver so it looks like he's got a bunch of arrows in his quiver so and you can get you can you can kind of squeeze all of them in there if you really wanted to um, but and they fit for the most part but it's probably if you try and stick them all in there one usually kind of sticks up higher than the others so it's good to kind of like have one have him hold one of the arrows and then put the others in his quiver but if you wanted to get them all in the quiver you could and then he also comes with another set of hands which are basically closed fisted so I guess if you want to get in a fist fight or something you could switch out the hands um, and put the closed fisted ones in. Okay so the articulation on this figure like we've seen with other recently released uh, DC collectibles figures is actually pretty good. Um, definitely more than your typical DC collectible um, and and so let's just go over it real quick. Um, the head is on a ball joint so you can look left and right. Now again the hood doesn't turn. Um, you, you can pull the hood back but the hood itself does not turn with the head um, but he can look left and right um, but if you want him to look left and right without looking in the hood then you want to pull the hood back now one thing I do want to note is this the hood and, and this these shoulder pieces are all one piece essentially and they are glued in so you can you do risk you could actually basically pull this off if you wanted to um, it's not meant to be removable but uh, if you wanted to pull it off, it's just glued on there. Um, and in fact, the the band or the the quiver, the straps on the quiver, kind of keep it in place. So even if it comes unglued, you can kind of still keep it in place. So it's your call if you want to if if you want to remove the hood, you you technically could. Um, and then you could even probably keep the hood on there. Um, as long as you have the the quiver straps on there but I but again the hoods technically not made to be removed though you can pull it back but you do risk detaching that glue if you pull too hard so I just want to caution you on that but you may decide that you just like it better with the hood taking the hood off um, in which case you can if you, if you want to because again this piece is just essentially glued on there um, he doesn't really have much up or down movement. He's got a little bit down, um, but not a whole lot. Uh, the arms are just your standard ball hinge joints, so he can get his arms out pretty good. Um, unfortunately, the elbows are only single jointed, and in this case, you know, normally it's not a big deal, but in this case, I think double jointed elbows would have been nice to allow him to get more bend to get in better bow firing positions. Um, but he's only got the single, his swivel there, um, so you've got the swivel, and he's also got good rotation in the shoulder and everything. Um, and then he's got he's got hinged wrists, swivel wrists, which is nice. And both sets of hands have the hinge on it, so that's good. Um, he's got a midsection twist here. As I said, it's just attached with a ball joint, so he's got some down movement and some back movement, and you can twist. Um, you, if you really want to get turned to the side like that, you kind of have to play with it kind of raise it off a little bit off the ball joint but you can get it to turn to the side like that um, no no swivel at the waist and he does have 
the ball hinge joints at the leg so he can do the splits good. Now one thing I want to note here is these joints tend to get a little loose and in fact at least on my figure you can see how the leg has come kind of separated from the from the rest of the body of the figure so you have this gap um, between the waist section and the leg it's not that big a deal to me and I like that you can do like the splits and everything but just something to be wary of um, and he can do his legs forward about that much and back about that much he's got um, Again, single jointed knees, and then he's got um, he's got a, a boot swivel, and the knee is also you can also swivel at the knee, and then he's got the ankle pivots, the hinged ankle pivots, which is nice. Okay, so now here's a look at the other figure in the set. Um, now again, as I mentioned before, spoiler if you haven't seen season one mute it for a minute but this really is not Deathstroke this is Deathstroke's partner Wintergreen um, you can see he's got both eyes that's the biggest giveaway is he's got both you know the mask has both eyes and so this guy is not actually Deathstroke even though that's what they label him as on the packaging probably because if they called him Wintergreen nobody would know who he was but he's got pretty nice details, he's got nice accessories, he's got this strap uh, that holds a sword on the back, uh, which you can take off if you want. It's got the grenades, smoke grenades or whatever they are, uh, sculpted on along with some pouches and stuff, which is nice. And the grenades have some added color with the yellow, like we see in the TV series. Um, he's got the mask, which is split, you know, one side orange and one side black. And as I say, this particular character has both of his eyes. Um, he's got some nice sculpted armor on the upper body um, and again the sword is sheath is removable um, and the sword itself is of course removable and we'll go into more of that in a minute with with the accessories. He's got a, a working um, gun holster on his on his uh, right leg and then down here on his left ankle, he's got a working knife holster as well with a removable knife. And then he's got really nice, like on his boots, I like the detailing with like the dirt or mud on his black boots, which is just nice added uh, details. And he's got the pad padding and everything. So figure is basically black with some uh, yellowish orange mixed in on the mask and the grenades, but otherwise... And then he's got like some metal like silver on the paddings on his ankles and stuff. But for the most part, you know, we're looking at, at blacks on this figure. But it comes off looking really nice. Okay, so for accessories, like with the arrow figure, this figure comes with quite a few. Uh, so we'll go over them real quick. As I mentioned before, he's got the bandolier with the short, uh, sword sheath um, with the removable uh, sword. Uh, the sword looks very true to what we see used in the television series. It's a, a dark black handle and then a lighter black for the blade. And he's got some holes in the blade like we see in the television series. And it's sculpted to look really sharp and everything. So I think the blade looks really good. Um, now he holds it best in his uh, left hand. Um, if you stick it in that hand, he holds it pretty tightly. You can put it in his right hand but it's much looser so basically you kind of have to just sit it in there loose if you if you want to hold it, have him hold it in the right hand and he also comes with a pistol which again is just all black uh, but there's some nice sculpting on the pistol and everything and again this fits in his holster that he has so he's got the working holster and it fits in nicely there He's got the, a smaller knife, which is a, just a black handle with silver blade, but still pretty nice detailing on the handle with the with the grips and everything. And again, that fits in his uh, little sheath down on his ankle, and that fits in nice and tight as well. And then finally, he comes with a, a machine gun with a grenade launcher on it which I think he used in the television series. And it's got a uh, lighter metallic uh, bronze type coloring on the top and then, and then the back is black and the bottom part of the gun is black as well. And he'll hold that in either hand.
Well, this figure has actually a little bit more articulation than, than the arrow figure even. Um, so we'll just go over those points real quick. Um, again, the head's just on a ball joint, so not a lot of back movement on the head. Uh, can look down a little bit, um, and then can look left and right with no problem. Um, shoulders, standard ball hinge joints, and he can stick his, hand, his arms out completely with no problem. Um, he's got a, a tricep swivel, and then he's got the single hinged elbow. Um, but he can actually bend his elbow more than, than the arrow figure can, which is good. And then he's got um, hinged uh, swivel wrist. Now the hinge on this is up at the top, so he can do his wrists up and down as, as, a, as opposed to back and forth. And that's the same on both hands. And then he's got, again, a midsection joint. Um, like arrow where it's just with a ball joint so he's got he's got good rotation um, there but he doesn't have a lot very much in the way of up and down movement at the midsection um, no no waist swivel uh, legs are on the ball joints so you can if you want you can have him do the splits pretty good um, and he can do the legs his leg forward about that much and then back and then he's got a uh, um, thigh swivel as well. And then he's got double jointed knees. And then he's got the, the hinged ankle pivot, which is nice. And just to give you some comparisons, here's uh, the Deathstroke figure next to his uh, New 52 uh, Deathstroke version and the Batman Arkham Origins uh, version, also both released by DC Collectibles recently. Um, now this Deathstroke probably doesn't have quite as much articulation as the Batman Arkham Origins one, but definitely has a lot more articulation than the New 52 version. And then here's Arrow next to his New 52 counterpart, and this new Arrow figure definitely has more articulation than, than the New 52 version. So that's my review. Overall, I really like these figures, and if you're a fan of the television series, then I think you'll definitely want to pick these up. Um, now, as I've mentioned before, it's a little misleading on the labeling of the one figure, um, but I, I, you know, I, I still think it's a cool figure. Um, you can still pretend it's Deathstroke if you want to, um, but definitely, I, th I think, you know, it, it's a cool figure. I, I wouldn't mind seeing them releasing, you know, maybe down the road, um, ac the actual Deathstroke. You know, now that in the TV series we've seen the actual Deathstroke. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing them release a version and maybe, you know, do Arrow with, with the mask instead of the painted green on the face and stuff, um, just to give them, them an updated look. Um, you know, I mean, people may w would rather see other characters from the show made into figures before they see that, but I, 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 would, I wouldn't be too upset if, if we saw that release down the road. But still, I think this is a pretty cool set. Uh, nice detail. I think the likeness to the Arrow actor is is pretty decent, and and the articulation on, and the detail on these are both pretty good. So that's my review. I hope you enjoy it. And until next time, I'll catch you later.